I'm getting into beekeeping. I've been fascinated with bees for as long as I can remember. And about a year and a half ago, I happened upon two YouTubers that have series on the subject. Frederick Dunn from Northern Pennsylvania and Vino Farm, who's just west of Boston, both in the United States. So Fred has a beginner Q&A that's been going on for over 60 weeks now, while Vino Farm has chronicled his experience for the past five years. And I think he's really mastered wintering bees in cold climates. I've never really taken the plunge just because of my own preconceived notions, I think, about the time commitment for caring for the bees and harvesting honey and all that it entails. But Fred really introduced me to the Flow Hive, which is a huge time saver and stress reliever. And we're really gonna go into a lot more details as more videos come out on that. So we're gonna dive right into this thing. So smash that subscribe button, whack the notification bell on the way up, and let's get these hives put together. So these components are all laser cut, even the holes that the stainless steel screws are gonna go into, so there's no drilling involved. The finger joints fit really well together with no sanding. And we're gonna use some Tight Bond 3 glue to hold everything together before we screw it. Tight Bond 3 is the waterproof version. And we're clamping everything. We're gonna check the squareness with the inner cover. Perfect. And there it is, number one out of two. My daughter painted the roof green here. I think she did an awesome job. One idea that I had was to spray foam the underside of this roof inside there. I'm gonna use feeder shims as uh, not only venting, but for feeding as well. And then I'm gonna turn it into a Vivaldi board in the winter with burlap to uh, vent the hive out. Now in our barns, we put insulation underneath the steel, between the steel and the trusses to uh, prevent condensation. And so my thought was for in here too, why don't I spray foam this? It's not only gonna seal it, but it's gonna help with condensation as well and as well as insulating the roof. And so I don't have to use um, like a two inch foam board or, or whatever. And I can still, you know, maintain this uh, nice looking roof throughout the winter. Comment on that. Tell me if I'm not thinking right or whatever. I wanna know what you guys think about that. The other thing is I didn't put any, I didn't put the windows in. I haven't put any hardware or anything on this because uh, I wanna put a coating on this to protect this wood. This is uh, hoop pine or ericaria, as the Australians call it. And so this needs to be coated, otherwise it's gonna rot really fast. And I don't really wanna paint it. I really like how this looks right here. I really like these, I like the color of this. I like how it looks with um, the roof here. By the way, this, because these are not fastened down, this outer cover would just fall all the way down. So I'd have it kind of offset and resting on the inner cover right there. So that's why it looks kind of weird. But I'm going to use uh, Vino Farm. The guy from Vino Farm uh, requests this as a coating for natural wood. And it's a poly way made by Vermont Natural Coatings um, and it's a clear. So hopefully it'll maintain this look and protect the wood. So I'm gonna put a couple coats of that on. So we're out in the apiary here. We're drilling holes for pedestals that the hives are going to sit on. So we drilled the holes with a skid loader and I widened out just the tops so that the grass would not be growing up right around the hive and make it easier to manage. Here we're drilling holes between these two trees for a feeding station. On this side is going to be a pollen feeder and on the other side is going to be a robbing station. And I'm going to plant some flowers and stuff around here and put a little stonework around. Here we're pouring the concrete, filling the holes, and we're setting the 6x6 treated posts in there, smoothing out some concrete on the top. So as you can see this will help keep uh, grass away from growing around it and uh, discourage like ants and all that kind of stuff. And here's the platform that the hives are going to sit on. Got a little dark so it's 
a little tough to see. And we're drilling in some Spax anchors. I've got the hive uh, bottom board on. It's got spirit levels in the back and on the sides. We've got them set in there so that the uh, hive side to side is perfectly level and front to back it tips back by three degrees. So if I have those perfectly level then that's what it's going to be. And there you go. And you can see the feeding station there is finished up and the hives over on the on the left side there. I've got a chicken coop there is what's on the on to the right of the hives. And we go up on top of the hill to the south here there's about 13 acres of alfalfa planted. Here's the robbing station, a little closer view, that stonework I put in there and I've got some flowers in there. This is the pollen feeder. So the bees can come in all four sides, have the little lean-tos on them. They can go in through the slats there and then you can see the slats in the front. This is the robbing station. It's open on the bottom so I can just put old frames in there and the bees can come in through the bottom and through the holes in the front and the back and clean them out. And we're back at the hives. Now we're going to go through set up how this all is going to work. So here's the bottom board for the Flow Hive 2. You can see the slatted stain, uh, I think it's stainless, um, board in the bottom, the screen board. This is a slatted rack that I made. I just made it out of three quarter inch plywood and some one buys around the side. Rabbited the joints together and it's all glued. I used a three inch dado blade on a table saw to cut the slats and they're spaced evenly so they'll line up with the frames as they're sitting in the hive. That's going to give the bees some extra space down below and, if, and they tell me the queen lays her eggs closer to the bottom and fills out the frames. Now we're putting the deep brood box on. It's got 10 frames. This is a 10 frame version. You can get an 8 frame. And I have better comb by better bee in there, all 10 frames of it. So you can see that's fully drawn comb. So these bees don't have to do hardly any work to that. Any blemishes and whatever they'll they'll uh, clean up and straighten out. But they won't have to do much work. That queen can go right into laying as soon as I put her in. So when we're just putting them in, we're just going to have the, the brood box on there and this feeder shim. This is a feeder shim I made. It's got the five holes in the bottom, four of them are screened, and two holes on each end. That's going to serve in the winter as a Vivaldi board for venting. I've got three inches of, uh, or three eighths of an inch of bee space there underneath. And you can see the hooks on the side are for the straps, and we'll show you that in a little bit. This is a rapid round feeder, and that's going to go over that center hole, which does not have a screen in it. So the bees can come up through that right into that wrap it around but they cannot get into the rest of the feeder shim and here's the flow hive roof now we talked earlier about what I was going to do for ventilation and insulation in the roof uh, I took quarter inch dado and cut four slots in the side panels of it there and so the air is going to flow up and out through the four holes in the roof I slotted the the center joint there in the roof as well and I shimmed it up a quarter inch so that those quarter inch slots would now become vent holes and we spray foam some insulation there I used a different insulation on the other one and it worked a lot better that one there is pretty pretty chopped up and they've got thumb screws on the side and you can see I can lift up that feeder shim with the roof by tightening those thumb screws. So that'll help with the wind taking that off and that also allows me to use those hooks on the side and strap it down. Now this is a hive visor. Frederick Dunn designed these um, and these are designed to go on the front of the hive and they're designed to shade the landing board and serve as a little uh, baffle for the rain, keep the rain off as well, keep the rain from blowing in or snow during the winter will keep keep it uh, on all winter long and the snow can just pile up on there and not pile up on the landing board and prevent them from from getting out and hauling dead out and, and eliminating 
and we're going to take a strap and we're going to strap this thing down. Now a lot of, of flow customers have issues with throwing a strap over the top. You can see that roof hangs over the side and people are breaking roof pieces off, cracking the roofs and stuff because there's pressure there. And so I put these hooks on the feeder shim because the roof's got the thumb screws so it's held down already. So all we have to do is hold the feeder shim and clamp it down, clamp everything else down. So now some time has passed in our make-believe timetable here and so the bees are in and they've filled up seven or eight frames we've checked that and they're getting full on the brood box so now it's time to add another box I'm going with a deep you can go with a medium if you want to deal with lighter weight you can see I've got five frames of better comb in the middle there's the better comb again and the other five frames are from Acorn. They're just a foundation. They're triple dipped in wax. And they're an all plastic frame. So we're, they're, we're gonna let those the bees finish out, draw out those, those frames. And now we put the same feeder and roof configuration just on top of that. And we're gonna let the bees fill that up. They'll fill that second box mostly up with honey we're going to leave that on. This will be the winter configuration as well. And the reason that's going to be what we call a honey bridge, they're going to fill that second box up with honey. And we're going to leave that for the bees. We're not going to take that at all. And that's going to be their stores for the winter. What that also does is creates what's called a honey bridge. And she's the queen is not going to cross that honey bridge and lay her eggs in two completely different spots. She's going to want to try and keep them close together and so that's going to help us not need to use a queen excluder which sometimes can be harder for the bees to get through and slow down honey production but we don't want that queen to be laying up in in the flow hive which is what we're going to put on next so now let's say they've filled up that second box and it's time to put the flow hive on here's the flow super uh the viewing window there on the side it's got one on the other side as well and this is the back we're going to go into this a lot in a lot more detail once we actually get this on when the bees are in it hopefully this summer yet and uh, show you how we harvest everything but that's the back so we're going to set that on there and whatever they fill in that is for us to take because remember down below they've got 70 80 pounds of honey down below in that middle box it's a deep box now typically you don't put a feeder shim on top of a flow super because you never want to be feeding bees sugar syrup or anything while they are making honey for human consumption. But I wanted to do that for the hooks to strap it down. But I got to thinking that I should put hooks right below the viewing windows on the flow super so that I can take off the, the plates and use the viewing window while it's still strapped. So I think we're going to do that instead. So anyway, that is the full hive configuration. Obviously I'm going to break that back down to a single box with the feeding shim and the roof for when we install bees coming right up here. So the next video is going to be installing two packages of Saskatraz bees. Thanks for watching guys.